if we talk about edge curl, certainly most of you think immediately, think immediately about Maxwell equations, but it's a canonical application for edge curl. Curl Maxwell equations. Let's do an example with Maxwell, with solve Maxwell. Okay, we are looking just at magnetostatics, and the model should be a permanent magnet, where it gives the magnetization field M by a magnet and computes the B field, the H field, via a vector potential formulation. Magnetic flux B is mu times H plus magnetization, divergence free, curl H to be zero. We introduce as usual a vector potential, B is curl A, and put equations together so we get the curl curl equation, curl curl A, and curl brought to the right hand side. In weak form, it is to find a vector potential in this edge curl space. Satisfying this version of formulation. Magnetization coefficient times curl A, curl V in this right hand side. Okay. Bringing up NG solve. Okay, here we model a 3D geometry. Let's have a look on it. I don't we see anything. Okay, sorry, let me restart. Yeah, now we see it. Okay, we have a box with a cylindrical magnet in it. We can model the box by we can describe this by net can build in constructive solid geometry. We have an auto brick, give a boundary condition for the outer boundary. We have a magnet, what is an infinite cylinder described by two points and radius, cut with a brick again. Air domain is box minus magnet, so it's a simple CSG modeler here. We feed this into the geometry. We give names, material air, material magnet to the domain and match it. Got the mesh also. Can clip inside. We can select the clipping plane to look inside. Enable clipping. Yeah, to look inside. Okay, pretty much the same as we had before. Define a final element space, it's an edge curl space, the mesh, third order. We give Dirichlet boundary conditions at the boundary element called outer. We specify this in the geometry. There's one flag, no, gradi no gradients. So we give a basis function consisting of gradient function and other. We're doing only magnetostatics, so we can skip all the gradients. Trial and test functions. Okay, we want to find a coefficient function relative mu, mu r. And here you can uh, see the nice Python syntax. So we are iterating over the materials of the mesh with a loop over magnet and air. And in Python syntax, so if the material is called magnets, then we get 1,000, else we get 1. And we get a list of these coefficients. These constants and make a coefficient function out of it which we can use in the version and formulation. By now from the space, curl u, curl v. Okay, if you write down the by now from that everyone can see it, so you cannot hide your dirty tricks, so what we did in previous, so the matrix here is positive semi-definite, we always add some little epsilon to make it positive definite. That's what we're doing here. We're adding a little bit to regularize the problem. Modify it a bit to make the matrix non-singular. Okay, we define a, a, BDD, a preconditioner for it, BDDC, as Jay explained in the morning. It's a very generic preconditioner. The preconditioner must know what are the wire basket offs, what are the degrees of freedom, keeping everything together. These are now the lowest order edge basis functions. It knows the interface offs, which it breaks and makes continuous. And it knows the internal one, which can be condensed. 20,000 unknowns. 
assemble the system and, and, and solve it. Okay. Even in the tutorials, you find some different occurrences of the conjugate gradient iterate. So we have one conjugate gradient coming still from the C++ code. Now we're in a phase moving the solvers to the Python. This is now a Python implementation of the conjugate gradient iteration in, in the solvers module. It's still an ongoing process and not everything is finally settled. Okay, we can look on different fields now. We can look on the vector potential A itself. We can look at the B field, the magnetic flux, induction, German. Or the H field, what is curl B, one of the mu curl B minus magnetization. You can write down this expression and look at these fields. How can we look on them? Visualization, I want to see the B field, for example. I can draw a vector function in the clipping plane. So I get these small arrows. Can make more of them. Okay, like this. Maybe we want to do. Okay, that's fine. Now we can click on field lines. We have to enable enable field lines and select the vector field here, the B field. Build field lines. Yeah. Clip away a bit. Now we see these typical field lines from electromagnetic simulation. This was a very short Maxwell introduction showing how to solve a magnetostatic problem. Of course, you can go continue doing eddy current problems by adding the conductivity, full Maxwell, frequency domain, time domain. For time domain, we have the time dependent tutorials later on. You can do this in combination with Maxwell. And there will be a mini workshop on Wednesday morning by Carl Hollaus telling, doing more Maxwell examples with you, doing more exciting, larger Maxwell examples.